Hey guys, what's up? It's Alex over at Laser Everything, and today we are engraving photos on silver. If you want to learn how to engrave photos on silver, just like this, you're in the right place. We're going to walk through every step from Photoshop to EasyCAD to the laser. So stay right here because we're going to jump into it right now. All right guys, what's up? So we're ready to jump into this and uh, you probably don't have a lot of chances to get this right. If you're doing photos on silver, we have to get it right the first time. So uh, let's focus and we'll get it done right, no problem. So here is a picture of me and my beautiful wife and my amazing son and uh, we're just hanging out. It's a good enough photo uh, and it'll do what we need it to do today. We're going for like an even toned photo. There's not too much contrast between our faces. Uh, I know you don't always get the option to choose the photo you're being asked to engrave, but if you have a couple options, something even is better. Uh, we actually wanna try to stay away from extreme contrast and we're gonna get into that in a few minutes. But um, for now, I like this photo. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and uh, you can do this in GIMP or whatever other editing, photo editing software you have, we're just using Photoshop today, but they all have these tools. Um, we're just gonna come in and use a quick selection tool here. Probably go a little bit bigger with this. And we're just gonna select everything we want to engrave because um, we obviously, we don't want the background. So uh, just go through and select everything real quick. Okay guys, so this is looking really good. Um, the next thing we need to do is prepare a new Photoshop document for where we're gonna put this, uh, you know, the part of the picture that we want to have. So we're just gonna click up here. You can go to File, New as well, and we're gonna do New Document. Uh, and here we wanna put the size we want our photo to be. I want this photo to be 60 millimeters wide, so I'm gonna type 60 in the width, and I'm gonna go ahead and just square it off, 60 in the height. It's not 60 tall, but uh, you'll see why that doesn't really matter. For resolution, we want to keep it right around 300, and we're going to hit Create. And that's going to create a new box for us with the resolution that we want, and this is already the size that it needs to be in EasyCAD. So we're going to get a good resolution when we go to engrave it. If you wanted to engrave something 6 inches tall, you would make a box or a new Photoshop document that's 6 inches tall. Uh, you know, So just try to keep the size accurate while we're in Photoshop. Uh, before bringing it into EasyCAD. We don't want to really resize things in EasyCAD, though EasyCAD has some quirks, and again, we'll get into that in a second. But with that done, we can just come over here. We're going to do Control X to cut this out, and then we're going to drop it right into our new document over here and paste that in. And we're pretty close already to the size that we need to be, but we're just going to uh, tighten this up just a little bit and get it exactly where we want it. And we'll go ahead and drop this down here. So just adding that extra space to the top gave us a little wiggle room so we didn't have to measure the height. Uh, so now we can take our crop tool and bring it down and just crop down to the top of the image there. And uh, that looks good. Uh, and the next thing that we want to do is flatten this. Right now we've got two layers over here, but we just want one. So we'll just come to layer and flatten image. And that's just going to make this all one thing. It's really important this is on a white background and we're going to talk about that again when we get into EasyCAD. Uh, but so far this is looking really good. I see a little spot right in here that we missed with our uh, quick selection tool. So we'll just zoom in on that and, uh, and erase that really quick. And that looks good. Uh, and you can take a ton of time and go in here and like erase all of the spaces between the hair and stuff like that. I'm not going to do that today because uh, we're making a video and we don't want it to be too long. So um, with this, the next thing we want to do, we have to make a couple adjustments. So first thing we're going to do is come to image and adjustments and we're just going to go to black and white uh, so we'll hit black and white and hit ok and uh, that is now black and white and we're going to save two copies of this photo the first one is the actual photo we're going to engrave but we're also going to create a silhouette to give us a good base on the silver so the first one we need is the actual photo so we're just going to come into brightness and contrast we're not going to go too crazy 
Uh, and we're just going to turn that brightness up. We just want the highlights of the faces to be just barely white. So that looks pretty good right about there. Uh, and then the contrast, we actually want to turn down. Now that seems counterintuitive. All the advice you've ever heard about engraving photos says turn the contrast up. But that is underestimating what the fiber laser is capable of. The fiber laser is setting a power value for every single level of gray from 0 to 255. It's capable of amazing contrast. We just have to let it do that. And by setting the contrast so high, we're limiting ourselves from going from 0 to 255 to like 0 to 16. Why have 16 shades of gray when we can have 255? So we're gonna lower the contrast all the way. We want smooth transitions between all those grays. It's gonna look a lot nicer. Uh, once our contrast is down, we can make just a couple more adjustments to our brightness here. Uh, and then I like to go in and I'm just gonna take the brush and uh, we're gonna make it a little bit smaller, just like that. And uh, we're gonna set the hardness. We're gonna make this really soft because we don't wanna see it. And our opacity, you can see it's here at four. And I like to just click the eyes once or twice just to brighten the eyes up because eyes tend to come out really dark and they don't look so good dark. So um, we're just going to brighten those eyes up just a little bit. And that looks good. And we can go ahead and save this. So we're going to file save as. We're going to do photo one. And we'll save that to the desktop as a JPEG. We don't need to do any fancy bitmap stuff. Just a JPEG. JPEG will do just fine. Now we need to do our silhouette. So we're gonna come up here to image, adjustments, and threshold is the option we're looking for here. And we're just gonna turn this all the way up. We don't wanna jack it up to like the max because then you start to get these artifacts in here. So just take it to max and then come down until you just start to see a little bit of white peeking through. Here you can see there's a little dot there. It's a little dot here. So we'll just knock that back up until those go away. And that looks great right there. So there's our silhouette. We'll hit OK and we'll save this and we'll call this one Photo Base. And uh, with that, we're done in Photoshop. So we can minimize that and uh, we're going to open EasyCAD. So the first thing we need to do is bring in an image and we're going to bring in our silhouette first. So we're going to not click Draw Vector. We actually need to click Draw Raster. That's how we bring bitmap raster images in. Uh, and there's our photo one, but we need our base. So here's our photo base and we're going to hit open. And now you can see it's really big. It's the right resolution. We set that in Photoshop. EasyCAD is just weird. So we need to come up here and set it to the size we set it in Photoshop. And that was 60 millimeters wide. So we're going to hit apply. And then we're just going to do shift and C to center that up. And we've got this here. It's almost good to go. If we run this right now, it's going to engrave this white box at the lowest power setting. We don't want boxes around every single image that we're engraving today. We just want the actual body, the stuff brighter than absolute white. Uh, so there's a way to disable that in EasyCAD. It's over here in the bitmap file window. You may not be able to see these down here. And if you can't, just go ahead and click that bitmap file window and drag it out. You can drag it right on out over here into your workspace so that you can extend these walls and see all of the options. We're gonna check gray, so make sure gray is checked. We also wanna make sure our pixel power adjustment is checked. That's what gives EasyCAD the ability to really take advantage of those zero to 255 levels of gray. Uh, if you don't check this, it's just gonna do a dumb bitmap style like dither photo, and that's not what we want. So pixel power adjustment, we wanna keep that on. Uh, if we come into the power map, we're not going to change anything in here today, but you can and probably will get better results. You can set every single power percentage for every single level of gray from zero all the way down to 255. You can tell the machine exactly how much power you want it to deliver for each level of gray. Um, by adjusting these, you can basically change the curves, but you're changing it in the hardware rather than in software like on Photoshop. And that's going to give you the absolute best mark. I've developed these settings so that it just kind of works on its own without having to mess with this, but I'm sure I could get it better if I took the hours it would take to fine tune this for exactly what we need for engraving on silver. Obviously it goes without saying we're not going to do that today, so we're just going to hit OK and leave that alone. 
Uh, the other box here, the extend box, we wanna go ahead and click on that. And uh, this is just some extra options for you uh, so that you can, again, kind of fine tune how this image is being processed. The only one we want to check for today is the disable mark low gray point. And what checking this box does, we're not gonna add a value here, what checking this box does is it actually disables this white background from engraving at all. So if you are having this white background engrave, you're seeing a square around the image you're trying to engrave, this is the setting you wanna make sure is enabled. Enabling this setting deletes all of the actual white data, the uh, brightest white data at 255. It's gonna delete all of that uh, so that only things darker than absolute white get marked. So uh, make sure you have that checked and then we're gonna hit okay. We can also take our bitmap file box and we can drag that right back over into its little dock here and bring it back down so we can see our object list. So yeah, so a lot of people's systems, it sits like this and you can't see the menus down here. They're hiding down there, just so you know. Uh, so we've got that all set up and ready to go. Now we just need to talk about a couple of settings. So we're ready to do our first mark and we're gonna come in here and select a parameter from the library. I'm gonna scroll all the way down to uh, silver photo base. And what this is gonna do is, um, if you're familiar with silver and marking uh, metals like that, silver is highly reflective and we can't get good detail out of it when half of our beams are being deflected by the silver. So what we need to do is lay down a nice base first. Uh, and that base is really gonna kind of chew up the surface of that silver so that when we go in to add our details, we're not gonna be getting reflections and losing those details. So the base is a really important step and uh, as you can see, we're doing our silhouette, so it's just gonna lay that base down for the entire photo. Whether it's a bright or dark spot, the base is gonna go down first. So with this all set up, we can go ahead and light it, and then we'll run our base, and we'll come back here and talk about what's next. So here we are, guys. We've got our outline there, and we've got our silver lined up. Uh, you do just wanna make sure that you remember to focus, so make sure you focus up your silver. Uh, and that is right on point, right there, right where we want it. Uh, so with our piece of silver all lined up, we're going to go ahead and uh, just run the base pass now and put a nice flat surface down for us to get our details on. So let's go ahead and do that right now. We're over there running our base pass right now and you'll notice it's really slow uh, and it's it's hot. There's a lot of power um, and we have to do it this way because we need to break up the reflectivity of that silver. We can't have our detail work being reflected away. So that's why it takes so long. Um, but if you want something good, you gotta put in the time. You can't just one pass everything and expect it to be perfect. So put down your base and uh, then we'll move on to the next section here. Okay guys, with our base down, the second thing we need to do is whiten this up. So we're gonna go jump back over to EasyCAD and grab our silver white setting. Okay, so our base is down and now we need to whiten it up. We don't wanna put a photo on a black surface. Obviously that's not gonna come out very good. So all we need to do now is uh, come over here to our parameter library again. We're gonna come down and we're gonna do silver photo white. You can see these are in order. We have photo base, photo white, and photo finish. So. Next up is photo white, we're gonna hit okay. We're still using our silhouette and we're gonna move away from that next. Uh, but with our silver photo white, we're just gonna go ahead and mark it again. We're not gonna touch anything else. We're just gonna mark it again with the silver photo white. So here we go. We've run our base, we've run our whitening pass. Uh, you can see there's this little like gouge in here. Um, this won't be there for you if you're using better silver, but for me, this is a scrap piece of silver. Um, our final photo finish pass should cover that up anyway so I'm not too worried about it but I did want to explain what that was there because this is like absolute garbage uh, scrap silver here that hasn't been finished or polished in any way so uh, let's go ahead and swap out our photo and then we'll run some details on this and really kind of get after what we came here for I really do just want to take a second and reiterate if I haven't said this enough silver is crazy reflective and it's really important that you wear your safety glasses while working with it the chances of you catching a reflection right in the eye are way higher when working with something like silver uh, so please wear your safety glasses all right anyway that's out of the way uh, so we are done with our silhouette so we can actually get rid of that and uh, now we need to import our final detailed photo there it is photo one the one that we made those adjustments to 
and we can open that up and again you're gonna see it's gonna be way big so we're gonna do the same thing right here we're gonna set it to the size we set it in Photoshop 60 millimeters hit apply and shift C to center so we've got all of our details in here we don't have to change any of the settings down in our bitmap file we're gonna leave that all the same exact way we did the silhouette we're just gonna come into param and we're gonna scroll down to silver photo finish here it is uh, 150 90 and 25 this is almost the same as the silhouette pass it's a little bit faster and it's how I've gotten the best details out of my silver yours might be a little different I definitely recommend experimenting on some junk silver before you start trying to do jobs with these but um, it's right there that's the one that I'm using and it seems to work for me so uh, with that done we literally that's it that's all we have to do so I'm just gonna go ahead and hit mark and uh, we're gonna see how it comes out hopefully good And here we go guys, a beautiful photo on silver. That just looks really, really good. Um, we'll actually take it over to the desk so it's lit a little bit better. You can see what I'm saying about the eyes. They're still a little bit dark. They probably could have been brightened just a little bit more. Uh, we're just gonna go ahead and do the usual good old clean, dry microfiber cloth here really quick. And uh, that is just looking excellent. Let's get some light over here. Look at that detail. This is why we go for the lower contrast because you are missing out on so much detail that you could normally get out of these photos. Um, that is just, I mean, it's it's unreal, honestly. Uh, it just looks really, really good. You can view it from all kinds of viewing angles. You're not gonna have any trouble looking at this from the top or the bottom uh, or the sides. It's not gonna disappear on you. It's just lit well, it looks nice, um, so yeah. Put a lot of work into this one guys i'm uh, i'm super happy with that i'm really proud of this here it is one more time you guys a uh, little bit better lighting there so that you can see all of the details that we've got going on um this is just it's stellar uh you'll notice that we have a little bit of a halo effect around the outside edge um if you don't like that what you want to do is just make your base and your uh and your white coat you want to make those a little bit smaller so that the details kind of overlap them instead of underlap them. Um, so that's what happened here. The, uh, the base is just a little bit bigger than the final photo. Uh, personally, I don't mind it. I think it outlines the photo nicely and uh, gives it kind of like a 3D look. But if you don't like that, all you have to do is just make your base that you're laying down a little bit smaller than the final image. And uh, that's going to go ahead and fix that right up for you. But yeah, there's the, there's the final look, guys. Um, that is... It's just, it's so cool. Uh, it's really, really cool. I'm super happy with this. As with every episode of the show, I'm sure you guys are going to immediately find multiple ways to improve on this. So uh, if you have any suggestions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments. I'd love to hear them. If you got value out of this episode, go ahead and hit the like button. Let everybody else know that the content is good. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you get notified the next time I upload a video. If you really love the channel and it's the best thing that's ever happened to you, consider signing up for the Patreon. Our patrons get instant access to our fiber laser and CO2 laser libraries, as well as a ton of other perks that provide just like a ridiculous amount of value, and it helps support the channel and makes it easier for me to make new episodes and share even more content with you guys. There's a link to the Patreon down in the description, right next to the link to our Discord, our amazing online community filled with people who love everything that has anything to do with lasers. We talk about lasers, we show photos of our work and share settings and help out new people. And it's just a crazy friendly place to be. I highly recommend it to you. It could be an invaluable resource if you're not already a member there. That's all I've got, guys. Thank you so much for watching this episode. As usual, uh, I just appreciate you coming by and hanging out with me for a little bit. I can't wait to hear what you think of this episode. It's been long in the making, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.